in secret. All the ingredients are here. He attacks the job of trying to pass a wooden dowel through a steel block with the confidence of a man who knows it can be done. Maybe it will work tonight. It has failed many times before, but driven by an obsession that it can be done, he is unconcerned with failures of the past or dangers of the future. His only interest is to prove his theory. More power. More risk. Now it's steel against steel. Two objects can occupy the same space at the same time under proper conditions. He knows his theory is sound. It's all down on paper, a few precious pages that represent years of research and experimentation. But he doesn't know that his obsession will transform a man into a monster, a man whose life will be changed as he crosses the threshold into the fourth dimension. Shoot. 
do to get in there? You got a pass? My name's Tony Nelson. I think my brother works in there. You Dr. Nelson's brother? Yeah, that's right. You better come with me. I'm sure it'll be all right. Oh, Linda, Scott's waiting for us. He wants to get this one off the ground. I'll be right there. Uh, yes, Fred, I understand, but everyone's tied up in the lab at the moment. Have him wait at the reception desk. Thanks. All right, Roy, I'm ready. Linda, how about dinner tonight? Uh-uh. Tomorrow night. Sorry. I think I know the trouble, Linda. You're too accustomed to this Prince Charming routine. You know, from now on, I'm going to try the caveman approach. Scott's waiting for us. You know, Scott may not always be the boss of this team. Someday I may be in charge. Well, if that's what you want, Roy, I wish you luck. You don't think it's possible? It's building number three at the other end of the plant. Uh, how do I get there? Walk? No, Harry, your brother's tied up with some laboratory hocus pocus. We're going to use reactor number three commencing in 30 seconds. Okay. Start around. Stunts like this, and one of these days we're going to wind up with one Scott Nelson medium well done. Roy, it's a bust. Now finish off the block, will you? Let's not have any contamination problems this time. Is dead, Doctor. You wouldn't mind cleaning up the messy details, would you, Doctor? Well, there is one messy detail you don't have to take care of. That's explaining to Dr. Carson what went wrong today. I don't suppose you're too sorry about that. Carson, I'm not afraid of him. Come on in, Tony. <laughs> Sit down. I, I gotta go to a meeting for a couple of minutes. you're making? That's Carganite. Carganite, huh? As in Carson. Anything that's developed at this center is liable to have his name on it. No matter who does the developing, huh? That's not right, Scott. You do the work, you ought to get the credit. Uh, there are more important things in life. Oh, boy, you haven't changed a bit. But, my frowning, disapproving big brother, I'm glad to see you. I'm glad to see you, too, Are you really, Scott? It's been a long time. Okay, I'll leave. Hey, Tony. I'm glad to see you. We'll talk later, then. Anything else for today, Scott? Oh, Roy, come on in. I want you to meet my brother. Uh, Tony. Tony, this is Roy Parker. Hi. You two ought to hit it off. Roy's Electrodynamics, too. He's Berkeley. Oh? Huh? That's a good school, too. You passing through on business? No, no business. Pleasure. Not unless you call being out of work pleasant. Oh, Roy, you can wrap it up tonight. We'll start a new run of tests Monday. Right. Sure, nice meeting you. Passed you through the gate. In that case, hello again. 
And goodbye if I'm going to get changed. I'll miss you. Not for long. We're having dinner together. That's your assistant. <laughs> Secretary and right hand man. You know, I could work here myself if you promised to get me one of those. There aren't any more. But I'm glad you like her, Tony. I'm going to ask her to marry me. Oh, Scott, that's wonderful. Congratulations. Hey, dinner's on me tonight. That's a deal. If you lend me 20 bucks. <laughs> Come on. Now, isn't this a nice place for a family reunion? No, I think this is a nice place for a family reunion. Ooh, home cooking, that's what I like about it. What are you drawing, Tony? Don't, oh, don't, don't. I want to see it. Probably full of hidden meanings. Well, if you must know, it's a self-portrait. Where do you go from here, Tony? Just follow my destiny, I guess. No definite plans? Not exactly. Why don't you stay here and work at the Senate? Um, no, I... Uh... Why not? I don't know how many times I've heard Scott say he'd like to have you working with him. Tony, listen, why don't you? I've got something going right now you could probably lick hands down. Why don't you just take just a couple of months, on it? Well, I... Tony, Scott really needs you here. And I know you'd like it. How do you know I'd like it? Because I'm psychic. <laughs> And I like to dance. I don't. You're going to make me feel old and ugly. I'm sorry. May I? Maybe I'll get a spot on a bomb test in Nevada. With my record, I should make a big man on a bomb test. Why don't you be serious for a minute? Why can't you stay? Scott wants you to stay. And I'm just getting to know you. In that case, I should have left yesterday. Oh, I don't know. You seem harmless enough to me. Let me get a date for Tony tonight. Go out on the town. A great idea. How about it, Tony? I know a lot of nice girls. Thanks a lot, but no thanks. Oh, Scott, don't tell me that your brother has a deep, dark, secret past. Yeah. Come on, tell me. Who was she? Well, you have to ask Tony. Oh, no. Tony wouldn't get hurt. He just leaves a broken heart in every lab and goes his charming way. Interested only in science. Got me all figured out, haven't I? I'm psychic. <laughs> Tony, it's something today if it kills me. <laughs> Scott? Scott, where are you going? I forgot I have to do something. Tony, would you mind taking Linda home?
We're going back. going back down there again. Yeah, I keep hoping I'll catch something the monitor doesn't. Scott, there's no need for risk. The government will be just as satisfied if you do it next week or next month. Yeah. Scott. you grow up. If a job isn't important to you, what is important? Scott, we're underway. <clears throat> yeah, I'll be right in. Tony, let's talk about it tonight. I'm not going to be here tonight. I'm pulling out this afternoon. Why do you have to leave right now? <laughs> I need a lab, some equipment, a place to work. Why do you have to leave? Scott, where are you? Scott. I can't stay here. If I stay here, we're both going to be sorry. Funny, I've got work to do now. It's not like yesterday. Do I have to put it on a slide and shove it under your microscope? Man! When are you going to grow up? I don't know what you're talking about. Tony, I've got a few thousand saved up. You know I'll give it to you, but I'd like to know what it's for. Scott, do you see what's happening? I don't want a gift. If you can't lend me the money, I'll do without it. I ought to punch you right in the mouth. Go ahead. Come on, go ahead. It's holding, it's holding. Scott, where are you? You've done it. All right, all right. Gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies. Last week in this room, I handed out a printed press release entitled Carganite. And then I found myself in the embarrassing position of having to ask you to keep that release under your hats because of uh, security reasons. Today, however, and with a great deal of pride, I can say to you, print away. Uh, Dr. Carson, do you predict Carganite will replace steel in buildings, transportation, and so forth? Well, I... Uh, I see no reason. Uh, for the present, the government is more interested in the military and defensive uses of Carganite. Carganite is your discovery, isn't it, Doctor? Well, I wouldn't go quite that far. I am in charge of a large research center, true. But uh, we here are a team. It would be impossible for one man to do all the work by himself. For instance, the team that did all the final work in the final stages of development and was so ably led by Dr... Uh, yes, Dr. Scott Nelson, was composed of a number of young scientists whom we have gathered together here. With the able assistance of Dr. Scott... Uh, what's his name? Yeah, I guess it was kind of funny. Well, at least he did remember the name of a metal. Uh, 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 the Carganite. Carganite. <laughs> Tony? Yeah. yeah? I'm glad you're here. The train 
change in half an hour. Look, you got to help us celebrate. Carganite, the world's first impenetrable metal. I don't believe it. Tony, we proved it today. Not to me. It can be penetrated. Okay, Tony. You don't believe me? Get me some of it. Oh, get it yourself. Look, I told you, you want to work with Carganite, I can get Carson to put you on. No, I wouldn't be able to work there. You wouldn't be able to work any place you had to do a job. You just want to play around with your theories and make like some 16th century alchemist. Scott, I told you I wouldn't be able to work there. Or any place else. You think this carganite is the ultimate defense, don't you? Bomb-proof, bullet-proof, heat-proof, absolutely impenetrable. This idea of yours is... Okay, it's my idea, but you gave it to me. Scott, will you sit down and listen to me for five minutes? Please. Scott, do you remember when I was still in school? You showed me a picture of a piece of lead and a piece of gold from a, a European museum. Yeah, Paris Conservatory. Then you do remember. Linda, there were these two pieces of metal, and over a period of time, they grown together. Am I right? All right, all right. Now, it took 50 years for the lead and the gold to mingle. But what would happen if we could speed that process up? And I don't mean just lead and gold. I mean anything. Concrete, wood, steel. Where would your carganite be if I could penetrate it with a small piece of wood? Tony, it's impossible. All right. I can't get any carganite. But what about steel? and an ordinary wooden pencil. What would you say to that? Hmm? I've done it. Oh, now you really think I'm crazy. Well, you just sit right where you are. Don't you move. Don't either of you move. piercing that steel. There's no wood or graphite embedded in that piece of metal. Within this piece of steel, there's an intermingling of atoms. Wherever they touch, they're one. You did this. Four years ago. I admit it was a freak. Something happened to my equipment. I haven't been able to duplicate it since. You got any notes on it? I did have. The fire. But I'll, I'll tell you something. I was working on the theory of amplifying atomic fields. I built myself a, a, a force field. But at the moment, when this pencil mingled with the steel, my device wasn't affecting them. It was affecting me. How do you mean? I willed it. You did what? I willed it. With your brain, with occult powers? Is this why I sent you to school to become a mystic? I said to myself it was gonna happen. I said it was going to happen, and it did. And your equipment, your fancy turn, lead into gold machine. It acted as a booster. It boosted my brain waves to an extent I've never been able to achieve since. But at that moment, I willed it. You frighten me running away like that. I wasn't trying to frighten you. I was sore. Tony, I'll be honest with you. I don't know whether to believe your story or not, but at least now I know what's been bothering you. Do you?
I don't know if you willed it. But I know you believe it. And I believe in you. Isn't that enough? I guess so. Are you ready to go back? No. This is the second time you've tried to run away from me. Linda, you're my brother's girl. Linda, please, don't. Yeah. And nothing will ever change it. I'm taking the first train tomorrow morning. If I didn't love you, I'd lose my patience. Oh, Linda, I've done this before. I've taken a girl from him before. He was going to marry her. And I took her and I went away with her. Do you understand that? I hear you, Tony. It lasted a month. She was no good. I found that out soon enough. And Scott would have too. Do you think I could tell him that? Do you think it made any difference? Did you love her? I felt a lot of things about Scott. I guess I always will. I hope we don't end up hating each other. time as any to say it. Welcome aboard. Thanks. Oh, uh, Scott's the only fellow on this team who has his own office, but you can have this locker. <laughs> and we won't be starting any serious work until after tomorrow. Now, how about some lunch? No, I think I'll just poke around for a bit. Right. Oh, Roy, what about materials if I should need something? Anything you might need would have to be requisition. Scott's the only man on the team who can do it. If you need anything, just ask him. Okay? trying to be patient like you suggested. But I'm no better off than I was before. Maybe a little worse. Well, what do you mean? Tony Nelson. Tony? Oh, Scott's brother. Oh, forget about it. The team needs you. You made yourself very valuable. I'd be a lot more valuable if I had my own lab. Now, now, Parker. Have a little more patience. You know, I can't start a new project until someone comes along with a new idea. Didn't you eat lunch yet? Uh, no. no. Well, what are you working on? I could type it for you. No, thanks. But you have got to eat something. Yes, Mother. When are you going to tell him? Soon. You've been saying that for days now. 
Well, I hate to tell him right now. Carson, uh, he hasn't left him very much. Do you want me to tell him? I'll see him tonight. Look, Brian, we... We did all this this morning. Now, why don't you just tell me? Am I hot? Not a trace of radiation. Okay, then why the pain? I got a tumor? No. You have no tumor? I have no brain damage at all. In fact, your brain is so healthy as to be almost... Wait. See for yourself. I asked you to come back because I wanted some time to check these EEG charts. I know you've been working in close. That's why I wanted you to take this electroencephalogram. I figured that with a picture of the electrical impulses given off by your brain... Oh, Brian, I, I, I know what an EEG test is. Just, just tell me the result. Well, you know, these graphs are supposed to measure the minute electrical impulses of the brain. Instead, your impulses were so strong... Well, I've never seen anything like it. That's why I ran the test twice. Wait a minute, you mean this, this is what's causing the headaches, the impulse? How? I don't know. Maybe it's your work. An effect of radiation we don't know anything about. Okay. Where do I go from here? The brain, what happens to I think you should go into the city. Have a series of extensive tests made at the hospital. Take a week, maybe a couple. Well, Brian, I, I can't afford the time. Scott, listen to me. You've got to realize there are some things more important to you than your work. What is it? I don't know. I... I was just... I guess I wanted to talk to you, but... I don't have anything special to say. Maybe I just wanted to look at you. Look at me? glasses at supper time. You know what happens to you when you drink too much. But I'm thirsty, Linda. All right, I'll settle for half a glass. But be quick about it. I want you in bed and asleep when your mama gets home. Go on, hurry up. Come on, Scott, sit down. I know Mrs. Sullivan doesn't like you to have visitors this late. That's all right, I'm just watching Marjorie for her. Something the matter, Scott? I want a peanut butter sandwich. Well, I think that's just about enough, young lady. I want you to get upstairs and to bed. Go on, go on. Linda, I want you to marry me. I'm not joking, I'm serious. I'm sorry, uh, you just surprised me, that's all. Not every day that a girl opens the door and a man comes in and proposes to her. What do you do? No matter what I say, I'll only hurt you. Okay, I, I want to hear it anyway. It's Tony, isn't it? No, it's us, Scott. You and me. I admire you more than any man in the world. 
But we both know that's not enough. There's more than that. What you feel for me isn't love. It's habit. Working together, spending so much time together. You depend on me so much. Don't, Linda. It's true. Just don't. You walking? Yeah, I just want to get some air. Oh, lots of it out here. <sighs> Going in? No. I guess you're surprised to see me working the night shift, huh? Tell you the truth, I wish that I was back on days. But I guess I can't complain. At least I don't have to work night and day like your brother and that, uh, what's his name? Parker. Open up, will you, friend? Right.
saw your force field. You what? I broke open your locker. I saw your force field. You had no right. For heaven's sake, don't talk about rights. I, I've been working with it. You mean... You mean you believe that it can be done? <laughs> believe it. I did it. What is this matter that can't wait until morning? You said you could use an idea for a new project. At 11 o'clock at night? I think you'll find this worth your while. This is it? Mm, those are a few of the top pages. If you're interested, we can talk about the rest. The third time I did it, I, I didn't feel any pain at all. Where are my notes? Around here someplace. I don't see them. Wait a minute, I'll get the lights. Oh, well, we'll find them. Come on, tell me what you did. Uh, hey, do you feel all right? You look terrible. <laughs> yeah, I feel fine. Well, look, this time I'll try it without the rod. Just, just, just use my hand. Turn it on. See what I did? <laughs> What's the matter? Scott, the amplifier isn't working. You did that by yourself. Maybe I don't need it. But you must need it. That's the whole theory, to amplify the electrical impulses from the brain. Somebody told me recently that my brain waves acted differently from most people. I wonder where those notes are. Well, tomorrow we'll go to Carson. He'll give us all the men and equipment we need. This project will be top priority, huh? Well? There isn't much here. Enough to give you an idea of some of the possibilities. These are your notes? I'd like to see more. I'd like you to. Have you plans to construct this equipment? I don't think there's too much sense in putting a lot of work on this idea until I'm in a position to develop it further. Do you? Tony, don't tell Carson. Don't tell anybody. Scott. A thing like this, can we handle it? You've got to promise me. No, just... Just give me a couple of days, see what we can do. Then when we understand it more... Tony, I don't want Carson to have this. I don't want him. Now, you've got to promise me. You do want the credit. I don't know. I, maybe I don't know what I want. Maybe I... Maybe I just like the power of being able to do something nobody else can do. Oh, Scott, not you. You've, you've always said... I don't care what I said. There may be side effects to this we don't know anything about. You ought to be checked by a doctor. You go. Scott. Look, now leave me alone. I just... I told you I've got to be alone for a little while. I'll just take the car and go on home.
you this morning, but it wasn't any use. Are you all right? Yeah, why shouldn't I be? Well, you don't sound so good. I'm uh, fine. Listen, I told Linda what happened last night. She still doesn't believe it, but we've been trying to figure it out. It seems to us that if you really are able to do this without the aid of the force field, the only thing for us to do now is to try and find out why. Then we know how to fix it so other people could do the same thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. And Scott, she agrees with me. She thinks we ought to make this public, too. He still won't tell Carson. Doesn't sound like Scott. Okay, okay, we'll go along. Are you coming in? Hello? He hung up. He ordered me not to tell anyone just doesn't sound like him. I'm worried. Me too. I'm worried about what he did last night after I left him. Night and you look a lot's happened since last night. What's happened? Brian. Look. Brian, you've got to help me. so I really haven't seen him for almost two days. He's never acted like this before. I know he hasn't. That's what worries me. Wow, it's a fine time for you to be coming to work. I tried to wake you this morning, and boy, you were out cold. How's it going? Okay. This whole business has me worried. I keep thinking that there must be some connection between force field and carganite. But all my research and all yours on, on, on uh, carganite has been on the molecular structure of inanimate matter, not people. The scientist is wrong to call anything impossible. Uh, take, take the Paris experiment with the lead and the gold. You said it yourself. What if it could be speeded up? Well, that's what you've done with your force field. You've compressed the energy of years into a moment. That's like the fourth dimension. Well, I could see that with objects, but not with a person. If you could use, say, 10 years of energy in a single moment, it would take something out of you physically. Say, did you hear about Schwartz? No, what? This cleaning lady found a body in the hallway this morning, and they can't find Schwartz. Oh, Scott. You mean they think it was murder? No, he died of old age. 
This guy must have been about 90. Well, do they know who he was? No, and that's the funny part. This guy was wearing Schwartz's clothing. He had his wristwatch and ring, and he even had his wallet. That's terrible. Where do you think Brian could be? Oh, Scott, Dr. Carson wants to see you right away. What do you think of Roy Parker? I like him. Well, you like everybody. What I mean is, I've always thought of Parker as being the perfect assistant. Never the sort of man who could forge ahead with ideas of his own. He might be right, why? Oh, new spot opening up. I'm just looking around. I see. Uh, how are things with you, Scott? Anything uh, new up your sleeve? No. Uh, what about you? No. <laughs> no, nothing. I'm just wondering. You know, you have the sort of mind that I like, Scott. It's never idle, never stagnant. Oh, I thought now that uh, Carganite was pretty much off the ground, you might be turning to other things. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, if anything turns up, I'm sure you'll let me know. Check furnace three for leaks. A couple of days ago, nothing major. I might want to repeat the test, given the planned activity on that room, will you? Oh, I just did. Nothing in furnace three for at least a week. Okay, thanks. Right. You done a lunch, Scott? Yeah, I'll be along later. Mm -hmm. yeah, recognition. Mm -hmm. Your name on the project. Mm -hmm. I can get you these things. Come on, how many things can you name, huh? How many? How long can you keep yourself alive by naming things you can do for me? Please, Scott. Please. Please. Oh, no. This is inevitable. 
You needed me and you used me, and now I need you. Dr. Theodore W. Carganite Carson. be out of here soon. But I'll remember. Tony, they made me look at him. I know. Poor Dr. Carson. He wasn't much of a man, but he certainly deserves something better. Dr. Nelson? Keep you just a few more questions. Here's a medical report, Captain. Would you like to see it? No, I can guess. Death by natural causes. Extreme old age. That's silly. Carson couldn't have been any more than 60 years old. If it was Carson. It was. Fingerprints check with the security records at the research center. I don't believe it. I'm a cop. I work with facts. If I have to start looking for something that saps the life out of a man like juice out of an orange. Dr. Carson's secretary tells us that just before noon yesterday, Dr. Carson had a talk with your brother. Any idea what it was about? Could have been almost anything. Carson often dropped in to find out how Scott's projects were getting along. Yeah, well, this meeting took place in Carson's office. Where is your brother, uh, Dr. Nelson? We expect him to come along with you. I don't know. Well, did he leave the research center with you? No. No, he hadn't come into work yet. Well, you live with him, don't you? Yes. What makes you think Scott had anything to do with this? I'm just asking questions. How are we all? Captain, why not ask him about the bank job? Oh, yeah. Uh, Dr. Nelson. Probably heard about the robbery that took place at the bank. Mm-hmm. Something happened there that we withheld from the papers. Perhaps you can help us with it. I'll try. Well, you're, you're a scientist. Can you think of any reasonable explanation for a piece of paper, a thousand dollar bill, that we found embedded in a vault door made of eight inches of solid steel? You should tell somebody about it. No. You should to get help. No. After all, the discovery... I said no! I'm sorry. Please go. I didn't mean it. Forgive me. You've got to come with me. I'll come buy you anything. I'll get you anything. Please you don't go. want to marry me? Or you don't have to. The only thing you want. Is...
Hello? Linda, what's the matter? Oh. Linda, do you know where he is now? Look, if he comes back, don't let him get near you. Now listen to me, do as I say. Get dressed. I'll be over there in five minutes. We're going back to the police station. I want to see Captain Rogers, please. What about? This. Wait here. Tony, maybe we could find him ourselves and, and get him to give himself up. He's already killed two people. And he came after you tonight. I don't think he'd hurt me. Tony, they're going to track him down like an animal. company? Yeah. What are you drinking? I usually drink what costs the most. Sam, champagne. Brandy. So every time Scott goes through something, he uses up a month's or maybe even a year's energy in a single second. Now in that case, he ought to be pretty old by now. That's right. But he isn't. The way I figure it is he's found a way to renew his energy and keep himself from getting older. You're trying to tell me that your brother can get energy, uh, time from other people? That's why a young doctor dies of old age. And how do we get him? Well, he's not in this, this uh, fourth dimensional state all the time. You'll have to get him when he's normal. Or you'll have to convince him to give himself up. Yeah. Get out on all points on Dr. Scott Nelson. Tell him not to take any chances. If he tries anything, shoot to kill. This guy is a wild one. What's the matter? Tired? Trying to go... You? Nah. You should see some of the old geezers that come into that crummy bar. I'll be 32 my next birthday. Honey, that's not old. Kiss me. Don't you know you're not supposed to ask? See if you can find out which way he's heading. Four more. I 
don't understand why all these killings. Just the effectiveness is diminishing and he's got to kill more people to keep himself alive. Look, Nelson, I don't know either. I only know I got to stop him. And I think you could give me something more to go on if you wanted to. Captain Rogers. Yeah. They spotted him, corner fifth and Adams. Let's go. We think we have him. He goes through a wall into the next building. There he is. How about that building and get these people out of here? We got him boxed in. We even have machine guns covering the roof. Good. is Now go home, Marjorie. Please, you run along right now. Well, maybe you'd like to play a game with us. Marjorie, will you be a good girl and just do as I ask? Just a short game. It won't take long. I'm going to have to try to build another one from memory. And I won't even be sure that it'll work. We've got to find that thing. If they know how he does it, they ought to be able to figure out a way to stop him. Sure, if they knew how. Suppose someone did know how. Suppose they were looking for something that would stop him. Would there be any story in it? Would there? What's your name? What good do you expect this to do? Look, he's not a magician. He can't fly. He's not invisible. He's as real and as solid as you or I. The only thing is, he can walk through a wall and I can't. If I can get this thing to work, I can go anywhere he can go. If I can run as fast as he can run, 
I can outguess him. I'm going to stay right with him. Sooner or later, he's bound to want something he can't have when he's in 4D. The moment he changes back, I'll... Oh. It has to be done. But not by you. Yes, by me! You're wrong, Tony. Look! Every hour, there are more people being killed by my brother because of something that I made. He has got to be destroyed. I've got to stop him. plans leak out to the newspapers. Who did this? Roy Parker. Parker! Parker! Where is he? Now look, it's too late for that now. The important thing is whether you can finish that thing before your brother comes here to stop you. Well, that's what I'm about to try now. Good. I'll alert the security guards. Yeah. I'll let you know. Remember, don't try to stop him. Don't worry. We have to increase the capacity. I wish we could find that other one. Well, come on, let's go. This will take another half hour. Who was that? Well, not just one of the scientists. Roy Parker. No, Scott. No! No! Captain. Captain Rogers. Yes? He's here. You got Parker. Where? Well, keep me informed. Get me the power plant. Where is he? Just approaching the fence. Stand by. I'll tell you when. Well, I hope it slows him down. It didn't even tickle him. He'll go right to where he put the force field. Maybe we can get there before he does. Let me know exactly where he's going. He's heading right straight into the back of reactor number three. Come on. You men go to the material.
they tried to kill me. He didn't want to. Oh. He'll do it again. Scott, can't you stop this killing? I could. Do you want to be remembered as a creator or a killer? Nothing can stop me, I might be fine! Man! Wait! Steal nothing! 